Good, good for him. Yes. The Eagles are, are the mascots, uh, the mascots for uh, North right. Carolina but Central. He is also particularly important for our viewers. That I believe a native of Brunswick County, or Indeed. spent a good bit of his life in Brunswick County. Started the county, his career, started as, his career uh, as the district attorney <clears throat> for Brunswick, Columbus, and Bladen counties. Son of a gun. Well, that's, that's right. a great that's connection right. for uh, yeah. part of our signal, the Fox 43 or Fox TV signal. Right. is a strong into Columbus County, obviously to a good degree into Brunswick County, two very large counties. And of Not course he has a home the there too. And he has a home down there as well. That's right, Southport. What a, what a great connection, yes. But Not to event, cut you off, but please get back. Let yeah. me share this with you. <clears throat> I met Governor Easley uh, shortly after he graduated from NC Central's law school right. and we were studying for the bar exam. I came down from Washington after I'd graduated from Antioch Law School right. in the bicentennial year of 1976. Is that right? Yes. You haven't been down here continuously since 76, have you? Uh, no, I went back to the U.S. Department of Justice right. where I right. met your dad. That's right. In D.C. Well, we'll get to After that, five years uh, and then came back to Duke. Sure, sure. But let me tell you this. So when I met Mike Easley, we were studying for the bar exam and he was um, he was a person who had distinguished himself among his classmates and schoolmates at, at um, NC Central's law school because he was one of the first white students to integrate an historically black school. Is that right? Yes. I did not know that. So I would have thought there'd be a lot more before that. Not so. at that time. In, 19, in the 70s, okay. um, the first uh, Caucasian students matriculated at uh, NC Central. Right, yes. right, right. So hence, he was on the cutting edge of uh, desegregation himself. That's fascinating. Because the HBCUs, for the most part, were fairly closed. Well, North Carolina Central has a both a, a very high passage rate, I believe, in the North Carolina bar. High bar passage One rate. One of the highest. It and Campbell have gone back and That's forth, right. I believe, much stronger yes. than Duke, much stronger yes. than Chapel Hill, stronger than Wake Forest. And it has the only night school uh, between right? uh, Washington D.C. and Atlanta. Son of a gun! Yeah, on I the did East not Coast, know that. right? I did and not. And sometimes know. you ought to you <laughs> ought to get the. Uh, the new dean, Raymond Pierce. Oh, Raymond, we've talked about getting down. Show. He also sits on the board of the Center on Law, Ethics, and National Security exactly. at Duke, which I joined back in 97. And yeah. he, he followed in the previous dean's footsteps, who followed in the previous dean's footsteps at, yes. at North Carolina Central. And, of course, uh, Dean Wagner was on there formerly and right. had they, a lot of great deans. And uh, one of the former deans is my former husband. <laughs> Percy right? Looney. Oh, yes, Percy Looney, of course. Right. Fascinating. Yes, I was Why? married to the dean of the law school at NC Central for many years. And Golly. He was a member of the faculty. We remain good friends. And um, he's a good friend of your dad's as well. Yes, so that he it's is. interesting how these connections all you know, sort of happened over a period of years. Well, we have got so much to get into, Gwen. I hate to say it, time is flying. We've only got seven or eight minutes here in right. today's interview. But yes. You know, we get back to, well, uh, let's get back to that to early stage of getting out of law school. And then, and so you were coming down here. You came down came to North down and I studied for the bar exam. Right. That's what I said. I met easily, and right. people said, this guy's going places. He's got a personality that's effervescent. He seemed kind of goofy to me, actually. Really? Yeah. I mean, he was, he was <laughs> funny and he was witty. Right. Uh, but we were studying for the bar, and we were all under pressure. So right. when I say goofy, I mean, we were just very, very, almost like deer in the headlights. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. I'm going to get all through All y'all. Yeah. All of us. And yeah. so we did. But uh, what struck me was his compassion mm -hmm. and um, his willingness to take time to talk with people and how well he connected. Right. He had charisma. Oh, yeah. In any event, so I, um, I took the bar, I passed the bar, fortunately, and right. went to work at the U.S. Department of Justice in the Civil Division. Okay. And um, one of my um, top bosses was a man named Togo West. Mm -hmm. Togo was, the, I think at the time, the Deputy Secretary um, under um, uh, the Attorney General of the, uh, oh, of the, the de Department okay. of Justice. Right, right. And uh, Togo introduced me to a gentleman who was serving as the um, Chief Judge of the United Stor States Court of Military Appeals. That's exactly right. We used to be called COMA and has since changed the name to the Court of Appeals for the Armed That's Forces. Right. But we still but think at of that time, Court of Military Appeals. It was Court of Absolutely. Military Appeals yeah. in, in the day in which I, time I met your dad. Right. So that time I was 20-something. Oh, yeah. Say, I, was yeah. Quite I like young. it. I like it. And um, I did uh, have a chance to visit with him in chambers. Yeah. And he took an interest in, in me because of the fact that I was a native of North Carolina. connection, of course. And yeah. he asked me had I thought about returning home at some point because he thought the state could benefit from having uh, some one with my background oh, yeah. in, in civil litigation so Absolutely. So, uh, to return to the state and had I thought about Duke Law School and I said well you know my father always wanted me to uh, get a law degree from a North Carolina school and he says well I don't know if he'd consider uh, Duke a North Carolina school either but, <laughs> <laughs> but if you're interested yeah. I'll introduce you to the dean so your your dad ultimately introduced me to Paul Carrington who was then okay, serving sure. as, as dean of the law dean, school yeah. and uh, Paul and, um, and, and your dad Robinson uh, helped me come back uh, as a Bradway teaching fellow. 
Mm. So I was a teaching fellow and I got my graduate law degree. And while I was there, uh, Paul Carrington importuned me to assume the uh, deanship for um, student affairs and admissions. Tremendous. So I yes. ended up doing that for about eight years. Is that right? Yes. You did it so good. Got my LLM degree and at the same time, while matriculating as a student, right. I began working as um, uh, assistant, then subsequently associate dean Gray of uh, admissions and student affairs. That's fabulous. Financial aid. Yes. Office. Another thing you have in common with Dad, he was actually teaching there when he got his LLM That's in 59. That's correct. So. Exactly. You all have followed uh, fascinating. And I was one of the last students um, uh, to actually get an LLM, the last American student, I should say, to get an LLM from the Duke Law School. It is now exclusively a program for international, for, um, for international students. Okay. Yeah. How interesting. For viewers who may not understand what why anyone would pursue it uh, after they've got a law degree, why what would you get an LLM? Exactly? Why would you get a second yeah, exactly. Well, my real personal uh, motive was to make sure that Daddy uh, right. was happy. <laughs> 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 I was Daddy's girl. And your father understood Good for it. So you. I was going to get that second degree in yeah. law to make sure that my father right. uh, was happy and also to kind of offset some of the pain he felt as a high school principal with his daughter never having gotten a high school diploma oh, because yeah. I just left high school and went on to college. He ribbed you for that. That's so right. So the second law degree was a kind of a makeup yeah, uh, yeah. for my father. But more importantly, too, it enabled me then to be qualified to be a law professor. So it's really a teaching degree. Oh, good. Yeah, it's an academic degree. That's that's interesting. I've never even asked Dad that question. Yeah, exactly. Why he yeah. got an LLM? It may have been to yeah, accentuate. It was prior to getting tenure. It's so a cre that, it's uh, credential that that you would get if you wanted to be a tenured professor. In my case, I became a clinical teacher. Right. Clinical right. Professor. Right. Yes, I saw you uh, had been teaching trial advocacy. Uh, mm -hmm. I've taught at all three area law schools in the Triangle, NC Central, at Duke, North Carolina, and U and North UNC. Carolina and I'm currently uh, still an adjunct. For tr and I teach trial advocacy at uh, UNC. I've been on leave for the last couple of years while I was, and I have transitioned to Duke Medicine for right. the governor's cabinet. But I do teach trial advocacy. I think um, I also saw Gwen. Not to cut you off, that you're on the uh, University of North Carolina Greensboro's board, board of, trustees. of trustees. Yes, Boy, I am. Well, so you yes. are still traveling a lot. Gwen. I'm very, very much engaged um, and interested in the continued success of the UNC. Um, higher education system right. and under the leadership and the watch and stewardship of President uh, Bowles. Right. I believe that uh, things are beginning actually to, um, to grow even faster and to expand with our ever-increasing population. The 16 schools have a have a real connection throughout the state. I mean they are in right. key areas of the, uh, yes. of the hundred counties. They've got a real presence throughout right. and uh, really make a difference every day. And we are very fortunate in North Carolina to have such an outstanding system for higher education mm -hmm. uh, in public schools as well as, of course, privately. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wake Forest, Duke. Central of course, Campbell. absolutely. Davidson and some other great schools on the yes. western part of the state. We've got about five minutes. Let's focus a little more on your tenure as the uh, Secretary of Administration. And then tomorrow we can get into a number of things right. as well as part of your upbringing, uh, sure. Glenn. But when, when, uh, Having known uh, now Governor Easley, mm -hmm. and when y'all were studying the bar together, how did y'all get reconnected uh, good question. in this position as Secretary of Administration? Very, very um, good question, Greg. When I left uh, uh, North Carolina upon passing uh, the, the bar exam, and I went back, as I told you, to Washington, to Washington to practice in the Civil Division of the Justice Department, I stayed there for five years. Okay. Then I transitioned, uh, with your dad's help, uh, to North Carolina and went back to Duke. Uh, after serving at um, the law school for about eight years um, right. as associate dean of admissions and student affairs and so forth and so on, I took a sabbatical with my husband at the time, who was serving uh, over at the law school right. at dean NC and Central mm -hmm. um, as dean. He got a Fulbright teaching fellowship, and we went to Japan. Is that for right? A year took the kids to Japan. Yeah, took the daughters. Uh, the two. You all have. And I'm sorry, I hadn't asked that earlier. You Jamil all and Robin. Two uh, girls. Two yes. So yes. we took the girls, scooped them up, put them in international school, and we lived in Kobe. Wow. which is somewhat similar to um, San Francisco, it's on the west coast uh -huh. of Japan. And so we lived there for, for that period of time. And that was in 1992, I guess, when there was an election going on. Well, I learned, I did vote by absentee ballot, but on the other <laughs> hand, I was not in the country. Upon reading some of the newspaper headlines over in Japan, I learned that a man named Mike Easley had been elected as North Carolina's Attorney General. Right. I thought, my goodness, I know yeah. this guy. I know that guy, yeah. I, and I was really impressed with him in yeah. 1976. Isn't it funny how things, you yeah. never know how full things circle. might come full circle. So when I returned to the country in 92, I uh, talked with um, Easley's transition team, and ultimately they decided that they didn't have enough positions, and so I was not hired by them. And unbeknownst uh, to um, Mike himself, I took a job at the very lowest level 
of, um, um, uh, uh, I guess you would say, career lawyers right. in the department. And I came in as what they call an attorney one, which is a junior level attorney. Mm -hmm. Climbed in on my belly, and uh, I actually did represent the Medicaid program for North Carolina. Is That's that how I right? got an interest in health law, wow. because I was the state's lead Medicaid lawyer. Mm -hmm. uh, for a year or so, and along with social services. And so that's how I ultimately uh, ended up uh, getting to know easily again professionally. Sure, But sure. Um, I took a job uh, working on his team and staff before he even knew I was there. Wow. Yes. How exciting. Mm -hmm. and, and these are big administrations. When we think about the Huge civil rights division, we think about it, the attorney general. They are enormous bureaucracies, and they are made up typically of career civil servants. Mm -hmm. And these public servants, uh, I would say, serve at... Uh, financial, um, I'd say, peril almost, oh, yeah. because the salaries, quite frankly, don't in any way uh, compare with, oh, yeah. as you know, what the private sector offers. Sure. But by the same token, it is good work. Right. Uh, it's important work. And I felt very fortunate to have the opportunity to serve um, at the federal government level sure. and also to serve the uh, people of the great state of North on Carolina. The, on the state level. And I've yes. heard folks talk about George Holding there, the U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District, on the yes. federal level where yes. folks could get virtually, they could name their price on what they'd like to get coming out of law school That's or right. coming out of clerkships for the Supreme Court. And instead, they want to come work mm -hmm. in the U.S. Attorney's office and make uh, a fourth of what they could make in the private sector. Because it's, it's about doing the right thing, right. Greg, and it's right. about making a significant difference in the lives of, um, of the people you serve. Speaking about doing the right thing, we're going to have to go to break, and hopefully, right. uh, thanks again for the offer of coming back tomorrow. Your willingness to come back to Indeed, tomorrow. Indeed, I look forward to I it. I love it. We want to hear about the offer that Governor Easley made to you. Stay tuned to more Carolina People with Gwen Swenson coming up next. There's a lot more to the personal journey from Bellhaven, North Carolina, to the executive cabinet of the governor of North Carolina to even now Duke University Health System. A lot more to it. You've got to come back tomorrow. You heard her talk about Bellhaven, to Maryland, to Ohio, to Washington, to North Carolina, uh, back to Washington, of course, now back to North Carolina. I hope I'm getting it all right. You'll learn more about that exact travel tomorrow on Carolina People. Come back for Dr. Gwen Swenson.